How's it going, everyone? 2024 has been a roller coaster of a year in terms of studio closures, layoffs, so on and so forth. But thankfully, one story is going to have a somewhat happy conclusion, at least. It remains to be seen, but there is light at the end of the tunnel for Tango Gameworks and Hi-Fi Rush as an IP. Uh, Krafton has acquired the Japanese development studio Tango Gameworks and the Hi-Fi Rush intellectual property from Microsoft Gaming, the company has announced. The move marks Krafton's first major investment in the Japanese video game market. Krafton is well known for their work on PUBG. Tango Gameworks was founded in 2010 and became a uh, part of Microsoft's gaming family when ZeniMax Media was acquired by Microsoft Gaming in 2021. In May, ZeniMax Media announced Tango Gameworks closure to the shock of so many people given that Hi-Fi Rush was one of 2023's best received games. Did it move heaven and earth in terms of commercial numbers? No, but it was a game that so many people enjoyed, and I don't think people were expecting it to move heaven and earth. And not only that, uh, Microsoft themselves had said that they were very happy with the performance of the game. I get that a lot of that might be PR fluff, but nonetheless, they were saying all that. So seeing Tango Gameworks get shut down was a complete blindside and something that upset a lot of people and upset a lot of people at Microsoft as well. Microsoft has not been the best publisher and the best company over the last few years when it comes to their gaming division. Let's be real here. They're acquiring a bunch of studios, acquiring a bunch of publishers, and then shutting down some of those top level studios. This one in Tango Gameworks, they obviously also shut down Arcane Austin, which was a little bit more understandable given that uh, they just had the train wreck of a release in in Redfall, but so many people love Arcane Austin for their work on Prey. Nevertheless, Tango Gameworks was founded again in 2010, and as a part of this integration, Krafton intends to collaborate with Microsoft Gaming to ensure a smooth transition and maintain continuity at Tango Gameworks, allowing the development team to continue developing the Hi-Fi Rush intellectual property, as well as explore future projects. Krafton will support the Tango Gameworks team to continue its commitment to innovation and delivering fresh and exciting experiences. Tango Gameworks obviously also did Evil Within, Evil Within 2 and Ghostwire Tokyo, which no slight to Ghostwire Tokyo. I did a full review of that game and I have a little bit of an attachment towards Tango. I'll be completely transparent with you guys. Tango Gameworks and that team was the first studio to offer me a review copy of a game, a big budget title, I should say. And that was Ghostwire Tokyo. We have a full review on this channel and I really appreciate that. I'm not a big review guy, but getting an opportunity to play Ghostwire Tokyo, get a review copy of it, that was a huge opportunity for me at the time and obviously I have a little bit of affinity towards them so I just want to be completely transparent Hi-Fi Rush I did not get a review copy I don't think anybody really did because it was a stealth release and uh, I love that game as well and I've talked about Evil Within and Evil Within 2 quite a bit whenever we do our PSN deals videos. Those games are regularly mentioned because they're high quality titles. And it's not Microsoft coming in and reviving Tango Gameworks. And it's still, it leaves questions on what is Microsoft doing. And I get it that the gaming world is incredibly volatile right now. Especially when you look at so many studios being shut down. We just had Meta shut down Ready at Dawn. And I went on the diatribe about Order 1886. I don't think... Uh, there's going to be a publisher that comes to the rescue of Ready at Dawn, but in the case of Tango Gameworks, it was just... That was probably the most egregious one. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys remember a studio closure that you were a little bit more shocked by. Tango was just so shocking because when you talk about consistency and quality game releases, like... What game can you point towards that Tango did that you would say is bad? At least with Arcane Austin, you could be like, okay, Redfall, they sunk so much money into it, and uh, that game did not pan out well. In the case of, uh, you know, Tango, they're dropping Evil Within 1 and 2. They're dropping Ghostwire Tokyo, which I get that some people were a little bit more mixed on Ghostwire Tokyo, but I still thought it was a really solid game. And they just dropped 2023's sleeper success in Hi-Fi Rush. No promotional push for that game whatsoever outside of a trailer at that Xbox event and then it just got released and it was received exceedingly well. Tango was just one that was so bewildering. It's one thing again when you see the garbage live service games come out and then the still and it's not all garbage you know me saying they're all garbage is way too much of a stretch but 
you get the idea. These live service projects that come out and then they uh, they underperform, they don't deliver, and then the studio gets shut down. Or a game like Callisto Protocol or Immortals of Van comes out and they were commercial disasters. But Tango uh, was putting out high quality game after high quality game, and seemingly they were doing okay enough. Um, and when you're at that level of consistency and quality, it's just like a hard sell to me to be like, yeah, that's the studio we're gonna shut down. Look, I'm just the content creator, I'm not, you know, in the business meetings and the, uh, meetings between, uh, head, head executives over at Microsoft, that's not my wheelhouse. I'm sure they have reasoning from a business standpoint, and they crunched the numbers and they deemed it that Tango was not viable to continue running, but, like, if that's the state that we're in in gaming... That's a more scary representation of gaming in totality than rather just Tango being shut down in isolation in a vacuum. If a studio like Tango can get shut down, that means a lot of other studios that you would think would be safe are not safe. What if Machine Games drops this Indiana Jones game? I'm sure that license isn't cheap to get. And what if that game tanks? Are you going to shut down Machine Games as well? I just offered to you guys this as somebody that doesn't understand the ins and outs of everything. I don't think most of us do. But the, the fact we could get blindsided by the shutdown of a Tango... You have to be prepared for other studios to be blindsided by their shutdown as well. If Concord's developer, you know, uh, you know, Concord might do really well. I'm not to grab on Concord, but I, I see it already. A lot of people talking about Concord flopping and then the studio ultimately getting shut down because that is the expectation level for a game like that and for that studio. Like a lot of people just don't see that game doing very well. And what is the direction forward? Is Sony just going to co continue funding that studio? I don't know. But in the case of Tango, like you're talking again about a studio that delivered high quality game after high quality game and ultimately. Ultimately, they got shut down as well. It's just something that is uh, a little bit of an eye-opener as far as the state of the industry. And you look at what's been going on in the industry as far as studios getting shut down left and right, job layoffs, and so on and so forth. It is a tumultuous time for game development as a whole. But at the very least, I know people are going to have their opinions about Crafton as a whole. But Tango Gameworks, Hi-Fi Rush as an IP has been saved. I was of the mindset that Hi-Fi Rush was going to be an IP that was going to be lost. But 10 years from now, there was going to be like a Kickstarter or a crowdfunding campaign that was going to be made for a spiritual successor to Hi-Fi Rush, and that would have raised like $5 million, and that's how uh, that experience would have been preserved. But getting Hi-Fi Rush 808 Chai preserved, and now I think, based on Tango going through this, if a Hi-Fi Rush 2 is revealed, it's going to be even bigger because everybody knows about this story, and that is just going to propel more people to check out Tango. I think ultimately, um, this actually does Hi-Fi Rush as an IP good in terms of being out there and more people taking note of it because it's a game so many more people were talking about after Tango's closure, and now if we actually get a sequel in the relative near future, I think it could be huge. But that'll do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Sound off there. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.